Well, hello everyone, and welcome to the plot tour at the end of June. Kicking off, as always, with the rhubarb bed. It's uh, staying pretty big because we've had quite a wet June. And the tayberries are starting to ripen, and next year's growth is going bonkers. But that's going to be thanks to the wet weather. So we've got penstemons here, lilies in the background there, lavenders, marigolds. Cosmos, Sedum, Cenotia here, which I need to, well, I need to deadhead that. Um, Alstroemeria flowering there in the pot. Got shallots there. I got plenty of strawberries, but um, we've uh, had botrytis uh, thanks to the really record-breaking cold April and the record-breaking wet May, and also the fact that. Uh, we didn't really thin them out terribly well, so it's been a bit of a breeding ground. Potatoes are coming on well. The Elfie variety here at the front should be ready quite soon, although it's not actually put on that much growth. But having never grown it before, maybe that's what's normal. So a real sort of mishmash in this bed. Courgettes. We've got some uh, French beans. We got a pepper there, which we're going to be saving for seed, so it's on its own to make sure it doesn't cross-pollinate, or well, hopefully won't. You got a tomato there, another courgette, another tomato. That one's not looking too good, actually. But most of the tomatoes have not done too badly. They haven't really had any sort of transplant shock. And the black currants are starting to ripen up. And we got plenty of gooseberries coming along. And carrots. They're sort of <laughs> trying to push the top off this new EnviroMesh hoop frame we've made. Still nothing done with the former blueberry bed. But we've netted the blueberry that's actually got some fruit on it. So we might actually get some ourselves. And this is Sarpomira. That started to flower. But it's still a, f a few weeks off before we harvest that. So we've got some lettuce that's really rather pleased about this cold wet weather we're having. We've just put in the Brussels sprouts. Again, they've, they've transferred very well. Rather pleased with that. So the climbing beans, um, the second flush has just gone into this wigwam here. And uh, this uh, selection there are quite a few weeks ahead. And we've got another potatoes variety in there. It actually is not doing that well, but uh, probably not had enough uh, actual water. So we've got some peppers. This one here has actually been our very first one, so we know that's true. So the seed on that is the one we're going to be keeping for next year. And the summer onions. Red Baron. Mm, yes, a little disappointing. And it's all twisty now, so... Uh, So we've got a few of the overwintering onions left. They're actually done rather well. I think we're probably going to do those again. And tomatoes, actually starting to form some fruit. As so we've got some carrots, radish, more tomatoes. These ones are coming on really well. Just need some uh, sunny days, warmer days. And Peach Peregrine has recovered from that rather bizarre start to the year. So the second sowing of French beans is in. I don't see anything coming up yet. That was only just done a couple of days ago. And you can really see the difference between um, the saved seed from previous years on the right and the new seed on the left. So we're hoping that's just due to um, it be becoming aware of our soil and having a built up a soil biome around the seed that's 
uh, it's going to settle in to ours a lot better than uh, seed that's never been here before. Foxglove dying down, as is the lupin. And the lupin's been such a thug, it's pushed the uh, tree lily over to the left here. But we've got salvia and a pink in there and penstemon at the back. And uh, cherry tree is okay-ish, but again, the new growth. I think I'm probably going to have to do what Cliff does in his Castle Hill garden and actually start doing some um, greasing at the bottom of the uh, the tree the fruit trees just to keep these ants from harvesting the green fly. So a real mish, mish, <laughs> mishmash here um, of uh, French beans, tomatoes, marigolds, doing rather well. <laughs> Unlike this is obviously dead. <laughs> the uh, the blueberry from the bath. So um, Pike's Peak. A couple of good sunflowers going there. And the uh, rose arch area. Now the fruit as general has not done rather particularly well. This is uh, red love apple, the new growth, again attacked by aphids. We have some fruit. Sea holly is just about to burst. We've got Waldo here. I'm going to tip layer Waldo because he, uh, he's got the sort of growth nature that I quite fancy for the obelisk in the f orchard bed. Salvia is still going well at the back there. Aubergines, they're starting to bifurcate on their own. We didn't need pinching out. We've got um, flowers coming on them. Uh, sadly, I can't show you a, an open water lily, but they are there. There's one hiding at the back there. They've looked splendid. I think we've had about five now. And the pinks are doing a great job there. We haven't got the daylilies out yet and just popped in some marigolds there and the um, dahlias are coming on very well. So the pluot is sort of recovering. It's definitely got some uh, new vigour on it. The garlic's going to come out of the front there. The rose has been flowering. I've had a dead head and it's got a few more buds coming on. And talk about flowering. The uh, clematis, Comtesse de Bouchard. Dahlias are starting to get going in the pots beside the archway. Autumn raspberries, they're coming on really well. I'll have to start uh, thinking about tying those in. We've rather abandoned these strawberries. The uh, Cambridge favourite variety has rather just collapsed. So there's been a fair bit of um, well, die back or death with the poor uh, super column plums. That one is dying back and I'll need to cut that back. There's one here that's died back to uh, completely, so it's gone. Others are putting on quite a lot of growth, but again, being attacked by aphids. Sweet corn, that's doing well. I think we're finding this netting is, is uh, good for just reducing a little bit of the uh, the airflow and making sure that the foxes don't come in and destroy everything. So we've got some uh, leeks just gone in recently. And the parsnips are doing very well, I'm rather happy with them. Here's one of our fallow beds. Very popular with the bees. And our mange too. 
has been a bit disappointing. So it turns out that you have to harvest them when they're about the size of that one on the right, about two inches long, and um, they don't taste particularly good anyway. So we're not going to bother with them again. Beetroot down the side, that's going well. And more beetroot and the cabbages. Cabbages and leeks. So this, uh, this one's hearting up very nicely. But it's the Sherwood variety that seems to be romping away. I'm going to be interested to see what that is like. It's supposed to have uh, pups after you harvest the main one. So here fruit trees. This pear has started to develop an interesting lean. Dahlias are going okay. We're getting signs of uh, courgette life there. This apple tree here, Saturn, is sadly starting to look rather unwell all over. It does have fruit, but um, the foliage is rather disappointing. So we may end up having to do some replacements there. But things like the uh, Victoria Plum here are just going great guns. And the Pinks Avenue, the Pinks are settling in, starting to sign, show signs of flowers. Unfortunately, the Glencoe Raspberry has, the regrowth has died off. And I'm not sure whether that's actually going to come back. But I'm hoping if I can tip Leia Waldo, that a uh, vigorous uh, thornless uh, black blackberry will be uh, a nice little addition to that. That's probably going to do what I was wanting it to do. So around here we've got the uh, strawberry runners, which are going to be replacing some of the old strawberries next year. We've got some borage that's just been grown from seed. Always nice to have for the bees. And sweet peas are gradually getting up the obelisk on whether they'll actually make it to the top. Very unlikely, they never have in previous uh, three years. Now the Chilean guava there, could probably do with uh, potting on. We've also got a uh, butternut squash behind it which may end up going up the obelisk if it uh, decides to go in that general direction. I will certainly help it along with tying it in. And hope everybody's keeping well. Take care and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.